Home to Cow Dog, Book 5, Unfaded Love, Chapter 11, Beulah's Song. I have the strangest dream, Beulah, my dear. I was standing close to you and holding you near. I felt electric shock just close by, touching your flaxen hair and seeing your eyes. I don't understand this thing. Is it a lot? I wake up tossing and turning and yearning alone in the dark. And my heart here in my bark again. These feelings are strange to me. I can't explain what makes me feel ten, ten feet tall but brings me such pain. It's bound by sorcery, bull of my high dove. Some trick of the sleeping mind, or could it be love? But I don't have time for love or poetry or song. Protecting my ranches from dangerous forces, I've got to be strong. But maybe I'm wrong again. Beulah listen, wearing the same sad smile on her lips. It seemed that a mist came over her eyes. And she sang to me. Please don't make me sing. Hank, you're a big, handsome dog, heroic and bold. You're what we talk about when stories are told. The heroes are restless ones. They're here and they're gone. Their ladies wake up alone and greet the new dawn. Plato's not like you. He's meek and refined. Sometimes I think I should follow my heart instead of my mind. But Plato is kind to me. We sang the last verse together. Beulah sang the part in the parentheses. Beulah, I pledge my heart. We can be friends to you this day. Very good friends. I never leave you now. Plato is dear. I come to stay. Plato is near. It's not sorcery, Beulah, my dove. I'm not just dreaming now. Nearly, you're only dreaming, Hank. I'm sure I'm in love. You think you're in love? Beulah took a deep breath and looked off in the distance for a long time. Hank, that was a very nice song. I wish, I only wish things had worked out differently for us. It was a pretty clear at that point that the song had worked. I had made a small error in judgment rolling on Dang the Skunk, but I had made up lost ground with the singing. Oh, we must have mourned over what might have been. One nice thing about the past is this the past. Now, I scooch over closer to it. How about a little kiss for your favorite troubadour? Oh, well, I, I guess just a little one. She closed her eyes and leaned over. I waited to be touched by the branding of love. The branded iron of love. But all at once, her eyes popped open and she made a terrible face. Oh, Hank, I can't kiss you when you smell like that. She le she moved several steps away from me. And I couldn't, I shouldn't be kissing you any. And I shouldn't be kissing you anyway. There's no sense of pretending. Huh? Well, hey, listen, I could take a bath if that's all you worried about. She shook her head. No, it's more than that. Don't you understand, Hank? You are a fine dog. I admire you very much. In certain ways and in other, another time and another place. Hank, I pledge to another. Another what? Another dog. I felt I had just been hit over the head with a post. I see. I suppose that means Plato. She nodded. How could you choose a bird dog over a cow dog? She shrugged. It just turned out that way. And we don't always control the way we feel. Would it help it at all if I challenged him to a fight to the death? No, that would be childish and it wouldn't change a thing. It's all coming clear now. I wasted my time. I wasted your time. I wasted my very best song. It's time for me to shove off and find something to fill this crater in my heart. She looked away, and she turned back to me. 
There was a tear sliding down her collie nose. But Hank, you'll always be a special friend. I got up to leave. Thanks, Beulah. Since since I plan to commit suicide, I probably won't be needing a friend, but I appreciate the offer. Oh, Hank, don't be silly. I started walking away. It'll be quick and painless. Don't worry, I'll die with your with your face on my mind. And then you won't have to uh have old smelly Hank to worry about no more. Goodbye, Beulah, goodbye forever. I called Drover and he came to a run. Play-Doh saw me leaving. Leaving so soon, Hank? I thought you might stay for supper. Play-Doh, old buddy, I called out. What I'd really like to do is have you for supper, but I guess that'll have to wait. He nodded and waved. Thanks, Hank. Any time. Drover caught up with me. Where are we going? I'm going to join my ancestors, Drover. Oh, a family reunion? Not exactly. We headed up toward the house. I was going to cut through the yard, then strike out across country. But just then, a pickup pulled up in front of the house and stopped. A man got out and went up to the door and knocked. He was carrying some radishes and onions. It was the same Baxter fellow we had seen at the low water crossing two nights ago. The guy lived next to the ranch. He lived on the next ranch down the creek, and I had a suspicion he might be hauling something interesting in the back and pick up. While he was talking to the lady at the at the house, Drover and I went over and sniffed out the pickup. Then we marked all four tires, just in case we might need to run a check on it later. I had just finished the back left tire when I when a freckled nose appeared above me, directly above the nose located at right angles perpendicular to the line of the nose with two big brown eyes on each side. Okay, were two big brown eyes on each side. They were pretty they, they were pretty brown eyes nestled between two long feathery lashes. Hello again, big boy. We're blowing me down, I believe it's Miss Scamper. Imagine meeting you twice in the same week. And it's your lucky day. You big hairy thing, she said, batting her eyelashes. What you got planned for the rest of the day? Oh, I thought I might get a run over by a truck, but uh, I might, could be talked out of that. Really? What will it take? I cleared my throat. <clears> throat> to be perfectly honest about it, Miss Scamper, not much. Well... Just jump your big bad self up here, and we go for a little ride, hmm? Drover had come around the back of the pickup by this time and heard some of the conversation. Hank, he whispered, you better not. Beulah might see you. I looked off towards the elm tree. Beulah was watching. Yes, yeah, she might, Drover, but that's a chance I'll have to take. Stand back, son. I'm fixing to load up. I curled my legs and gave a mighty leap, clearing the tailgate and landing right on Miss Scamper. Oops, sorry, ma'am. Hope I didn't hurt you. She batted her eyelashes and grinned. You're such a big old boy, and you jump so high, and I love your smell. Yeah? I can already tell you have good taste. She rubbed up against me. What is it, if you don't mind telling? It's a secret formula, ma'am, but I guess I could tell you. I guess you can. They're skunk, especially aged and very rare. Oh, I love it. Drover was still on the ground. Hey, can I go? No, nah, get lost. Go climb a tree. I could hear his claws hitting the tailgate. He tried to jump in. <clears throat> then he got a hold with his front paws and scratched and clawed his way up into the pickup. I made it, Hank. You proud of me? I was all prepared to order him out, but then I heard Baxter walking back to the pickup. I figured it would be the best way to lay low. It'd be best to lay low, or he'd throw me out again. I laid low. He got into the cab, kicked off the motor, and started up the hill.
I went back to the tailgate and waved goodbye to Beulah. She had seen the whole thing, and when I waved, she stamped her feet and yelled, I don't care. Just go with your little strumpet, because I don't, ooh. She burst into tears. Well, I don't care either, so that makes us even, I yelled back. You had your golden opportunity, and you messed up. Well, I'd gotten the last words on Beulah, but in the process of barking the message to her, I clean forgot about exposing myself to the driver. We just topped that big hill there in front of the house and crossed the cattle guard. When Baxter laid a heavy foot on the brakes, we came to a screeching stop. He jumped out of the cab and looked in the back. You got gum dogs. Get out of my pickup. Go home. Yeah, suey. I glanced at Miss Scamp, but she shrugged. We, we, we don't, shoot, we have trouble staying together, don't we, big boy? I was fixing the answer when I got hit in the ribs with a bundle of bail and wire. Drover had already abandoned ship. I figured I'd better do the same before the storm got any worse. See you around, Miss Scamper. Come and see me sometime, she said, waving goodbye. All done.